Hey, what's going on, everybody? BK Sports Cards here. Hope everybody is having a great day. All right, so today's video is going to be something a little bit different. Normally, I do uh, card packs, uh, mail day, etc. But kind of just wanted you know to walk through you know a little bit of you know my collection, what I collect, and uh, why I collect what I collect, and you know the uh, the idea of you know some of the vintage versus uh, you know ultra modern cards. Um, you know, for me. You know, card collecting, obviously, I've uh, been doing it since I was a kid. Uh, I wasn't around, obviously, during the, you know, old vintage days, but, you know, I'm a, you know, little one from the, you know, 70s and, you know, teenagers, uh, 80s, and, you know, on to adulthood through the uh, 90s. So, obviously, you know, I've seen a lot, you know, happen through the, you know, hobby is, you know, history has, you know, has progressed. And, you know, a lot of, the, you know, a lot of the older cards, you know, for me, I love history. Um, I love the history of the game, love history of hockey, uh, baseball, football, etc. And I, you know, kind of tend to, you know, go towards the vintage cards just because of the history that they tell. So I'm kind of, you know, just going to walk down a little bit through, you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, card history here and there and, you know, where we've, you know, come from. Obviously, you know, things started out with, you know, the older baseball cards such as, you know, the T206 and, you know, not everything was photography back then. You know, we have, you know, a lot of these ones were, you know, sometimes, you know, drawn art. And I'm an art uh, art person. I like to draw. I like to paint. So these older ones, you know, et cetera, are just, you know, really, you know, are cool, you know, items just to be able to hold in your hands and being that they're, you know, so old. So, you know, for instance, here I got a 1952 Bowman, you know, Bob Swift, you know, small card, but you know, again, the artwork, you know, in this is, you know, very good. And that's the way, you know, that things were, you know, going on back in the days. And, you know, even to these, you know, cards that I have, and I really like these, these aren't worth a lot of money, but these are from the early uh, 1900s. And these are just, you know, some track and field um, cards from back in the day. And I really, you know, said, I, I really enjoy you know, collecting stuff like this just because, you know, again, in general is, whoops, the artwork. And we got T. Higgins trying to run off the, run off the screen there. So, sorry, dude, didn't mean to offend you, even though I'm talking about, you know, vintage right now. <laughs> but, um, you know, then we get into, you know, the, the 33, the, you know, 33 Gravities. Um, this is one I picked up, uh, you know, a while ago. Like I said, I'll pick up these common ones, you know. I, I'm not always looking for the big stars. Sometimes it's just, you know, the the picture of the card in general or the artwork that went into it is what draws me to the actual card. So, you know, it's not always about the player. It's about, you know, sometimes just, you know, the artwork in general and, you know, what the, what the card brings. And, you know, back, you know, when our parents and grandparents, you know, maybe were collecting, you know, baseball cards back then, you got to realize that, you know, in 1950, only 9% of Americans had a television in their home. So, you know, a lot of times, you know, the baseball games that you listen to on the radio, um, you know, they were, that was your TV in your mind. And sometimes, you know, hey, you know, you'd grab a, grab your baseball card, um, you know, line them up, uh, you know, on, you know, who's the batter, reading the card, if Mantle's, you know, coming to bat, or if, you know, star players coming to bat, or, you know, um, you know, uh, autograms throwing up, you know, you know, a touchdown. So, I mean, it really turned on, you know, your imagination and, the cards themselves, you know, actually, you know, I, I believe helped, you know, people during that time. I mean, you know, even going into the, you know, 60s, 70s, you know, a couple examples here, um, you know, the Dave Casper and the you know, Ken Staler here, there was always, you know, little tidbits on the, on the back of the cards, you know, such as, you know, a question of, you know, something personal about the player because we didn't have YouTube, we didn't have, um, uh, we didn't have, uh, obviously, Google, and you couldn't just, you know, look up the player, etc. So, you know, that's that that's kind of the way, you know, things went. You've got your history. You learn sometimes to read from these cards, you know, at a very young age. And, you know, sometimes you put them in bicycle spokes. Sometimes, you know, you just, you just held on to them. Some people carried them, you know, around in their wallet. I mean, for instance, this, you know, right here, um, this is a 60 uh, Johnny Bauer uh that's a 50, what is that? I can't read that. 59 to 60, it's a, you know, authentic, but I mean, I'm sure this card saw its share of bike spokes back in the day. Um, so like I said, when it goes through, you know, 
these tell a story. How many cards, you know, how many times did this go through somebody's, you know, somebody's hands? I mean, was it traded to, you know, a buddy who, you know, maybe was a Gordy Howe fan and, you know, this guy like Johnny Bauer, they made a, you know, would have been an unfair trade, you know, and nowadays, but back then you really didn't think about this because these cards held no value to them. So, you know, again, that's why, you know, it, it's cool to see, you know, you, you know, buy the card, not the grade. Um, and again, that's why, you know, uh, again, I, you know, fall towards, you know, that, um, I think that genre in that, that era, and, you know, 1960, you know, 90% of, you know, people had TVs and, you know, slowly, you know, um, went up throughout the years. So, um, yeah, so, I mean, you know, we get to, you know, where we're at now and, you know, you have the, you know, the booms, you know, the junk wax, um, you know, comparing, you know, like I said, this, this Johnny Bauer to this, you know, PS, this, um, SGC 10, you know, T Higgins, I'm just pulling random, random stuff out of my collection. Um, you know, this T Higgins here, I mean, it's a great looking card. Don't get me wrong. It's, you know, color match and all that good stuff. But I know this card went from pack to sleeve to the greater. That's all the history that card has. And, you know, it's, it's, it's probably, you know, very mass produced. Um, like I said, I like this card because obviously the color behind it and, uh, you know, the color match with, um, uh, the Bengals uniforms. And like I said, I think T Higgins is going to be, you know, a special player one day, but, you know, again, it the cards today just don't have the history that they had. So, you know, again, you know, got a couple, you know, tens here, you know, LeBron James, uh, one of his rookies, rookie cards, the freshman, you know, season. And then, you know, one of my favorite, you know, Raiders of all time, Tim Brown here. Um, you know, I've got that in a, you know, in a 10. So, like I said, there, there are certain, you know, cards I will collect that, you know, have a, you know, higher face value or higher, higher number just because, you know, they're going into my, you know, PC or whatever. But then you have, you know, again, another one here that, you know, 1940 play ball, Jim Bottomley, you know, it's a PR one, but still nice, you know, it's rounded corners. It, you know, it, it tells a story. Um, yeah, I just had this, this one up and the 1948 Bowman, Alex, uh, Wojokowicz, um, you know, again, PSA 1.5, but you know, it's a, it, it's just a cool looking card. I mean, there's no, there's just no helmets back then. Um, you know, if there was, there's a, you know, a piece of leather or leather heads. And then you have you know, things like this where you had, you know, doubles on there. This is a 41 double play of Mickey Owen and Paul Wayner. You know, again, a lot of my older vintage stuff is in a one. And sometimes I will search out something that, like I said, has, you know, a little bit of, you know, history to itself. So, um, and that's, you know, again, why, why I do what I do, but, you know, again, just wanted to kind of, you know, say, uh, you know, say, Hey, do something a little bit different other than pack opening. Yeah. I'd like to hear your guys' comments. Um, you know, what do you like to collect? Um, do you play more to the vintage side? Do you play more to the ultra modern? I mean, there are no right or wrong answers. I mean, it's, it's, it's who you love to collect at the end of the day is, you know, what it is, but like I said, that's kind of, you know, my kind of, you know, journey through collecting is that I like the history. I like the looks of these older ones that, you know, like I said, have that beat up feeling to them. And I guess you call them, uh, well loved is I, I think the best word that I've heard to describe it. Well loved card. So again, um, again, like subscribe comment. Uh, you can always get a hold of me on uh, Instagram. It's uh, in the, in the uh, description. Also, you can uh, shoot me an email if you'd like as well. It's in the, uh, 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 description as well. So hope everybody has a great day, great weekend, and we will talk to you later. Bye.